Hello and welcome to Pathophysiology of COPD. My name is David Woodruff. I'm the editor of Critical Care Nursing Made Incredibly Easy. I hope to make this incredibly easy for you too. So today we're going to talk a little bit about what COPD is and the pathophysiology. So let's start back a little bit, kind of backing up a little bit into our anatomy and physiology. And let's take a look at the picture on the left, which is demonstrating our upper and lower airways. So we have our upper airway. The air is going down, obviously, through the trachea and into the bronchi, down into the lungs. Notice the location of the organs in relationship to the lungs. So we have our lungs there, we have our heart in the middle, and then we have our abdomen below the diaphragm. Uh, this is important because with some of the changes that occur with COPD, we're also going to see some impact on both the heart and the abdomen. And in fact, if the patient also has some underlying conditions, such as maybe obesity that is pressing up on the diaphragm, that could also be impacting how well that patient is able to breathe with their COPD. Okay, over on the left-hand side at the top, we see the trachea now moving down into the bronchi, finally into the bronchioles, and then down all the way to the alveoli. And the alveoli, we see our capillary network going around the alveolus. And now we've got our blood flow around the alveolus. So we have two different mechanisms that are happening here in the lung. We have perfusion and we have ventilation. The ventilation is the air part. So that's the part that's going down the airways, trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, and alveolus. And then we have the perfusion part, which is the capillary network. So two separate processes. We have the little picture over to the right in the middle there of the alveolus. And you can see there's one alveolus alveolus with its blood flow around it and its exchange of CO2 and oxygen. So let's blow this up a little bit and just take a look at that alveolus itself. And we can see these little clusters of alveoli. They're supposed to look like that. They're supposed to look like little grape-like clusters that we're seeing in the picture on the left. And each one of them has its own little capillary network that's going around the alveolus. This gives it a really big surface area for gas exchange to take place. Over on the right-hand side, again, we've got that individual alveolus, and we see the air coming in, and we see the gas exchange occurring, and then the air going back out. One thing to keep in mind that we're getting, when we're getting down to this level, when we're talking about the alveoli, whether that's this cluster of alveoli or the bronchial, but down here in the distal parts of the airway, the air is being circulated. It is not being exchanged. So in other words, when you're looking at the picture on the right and you see the air coming in and the air going out, that's really kind of what happens here is that air is just circulating through that alveolus rather than the patient taking a breath in and the alveolus filling and then the alveolus collapsing when the patient exhales. If we did that every time you took a breath in, you'd have to re-recruit all of those millions of alveoli, which would be nearly impossible to do. So instead, we're just circulating the air that's in those alveoli. Okay, now let's talk about what COPD is. Technically, there are three different types of diseases that can cause airway obstruction. We have emphysema, which is the destruction of the lung tissue. We have asthma, which is a narrowing of the airways caused usually by an allergic response that's causing inflammation. And then we have chronic bronchitis, which is a chronic mucus production and usually associated with emphysema. So emphysema, chronic bronchitis, those two things usually fit together as a component of COPD. Now the inflammation that occurs is going to cause a number of things to happen. Remember from inflammation that three major categories of things happen with inflammation. We have vasodilation, we have capillary permeability, and we have clotting. The vasodilation part is going to get more blood flow going to those alveoli so that hopefully we're maintaining our perfusion. However, we're also going to have capillary permeability. When that occurs, we're going to have fluid moving out into the interstitial spaces and the fluid will interfere with our gas exchange.
Eventually that fluid, again, remember it's inflammatory fluid, it's going to be thick and full of inflammatory debris and some dead cells, etc. So it's going to be thick like pus. And that's what causes all of the secretions that your COPD is coughing up is because we have this capillary permeability and this inflammation that is occurring not just in the airways, but in the alveolus too. Then we have clotting occurring. So this can cause some additional destruction to that lung tissue. As a result of having inflammation and having some of those inflammatory mediators going to the sites of this inflammation, we will have what's called oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is the result of having free radicals those are oxygen molecules that have become unstable. So you see the pictures on the bottom of the screen to the right, the normal cell, and then the normal cell that's being attacked by free radicals. Free radicals are normally produced in the body by the inflammatory and immune process as a response to killing bacteria. So this is a normal process and it's designed to kill bacteria. However, what happens in COPD is we have inflammation that's out of control and that isn't supposed to be there. So this could be an autoimmune response. This could be a response to cigarette smoke or to some other kind of irritant to the lung. But we have inflammation occurring and inflammation causes these inflammatory mediators to be present and they are going to cause the production of oxygen free radicals. Now, since there isn't any bacteria to kill, there's just cigarette smoke or whatever the, the mediator is, that free radical is now going to start to attack healthy tissue. So we see the free radicals are attacking the tissue here, and then we end up having this severe, what it's called oxidative stress, because it's an oxygen free radical. So it's an oxidative type of process. It's going to cause cell death. And unfortunately, these are going to be the cells of the lung itself. So the alveolus and the lung tissue. So when you take a look at this picture here over on the right, you see a detailed view of COPD. Now, instead of having those nice grape-like clusters, you can see that the walls of the alveoli have become destroyed. So because of oxidative stress and inflammation, the walls of the cells or of the alveolus have become destroyed, and now it's forming these big kind of bulbous type alveoli. The problem with those is that big alveoli don't have as much surface area as all those teeny little ones have. So we lose some of our surface area, we lose some of our gas exchange capability, and this is why your patient with COPD is eventually going to start to build up their CO2 and decrease their oxygen levels because they don't have the surface area to be able to do the gas exchange that they could when those alveoli were normal. We also have the production of sputum. So there's two main things that are happening here in COPD. And most of the time, you may have a patient who is diagnosed with emphysema, for example, or maybe they're diagnosed with chronic bronchitis. Patients who have COPD have both of these processes going on. There's lung destruction, that's the emphysema part, and there's chronic bronchitis, which is the chronic mucus production part. So there's both of those processes going on. The patient may have been diagnosed with one over the other because maybe one is a little bit more prominent than the other one is in this particular patient. But they're going to have both. They're going to have the sputum production, the tissue destruction, and those things are going to lead to air trapping, hyperinflated lungs, which is going to start to press on the heart, and you're going to see some cardiac involvement as well. A lot of our patients who have COPD also have heart failure. And that's the reason why. You can't separate out the heart and the lungs. They're in the same cavity. If you want to learn more about nursing emergencies, check out our nursing emergencies program at thenursingprof.com. It'll help you to decrease complications, rapidly detect problems, and implement prompt action in your patients. Well, thank you for joining me today for Pathophysiology of COPD. My name is David Woodruff. Until next time, bye now.